The NBA Finals are finally upon us, and we know which two combatants will face off to win the championship. Coming out of the Western Conference, we have the Golden State Warriors, a dynasty that spent the last two years recovering from injuries. The last time they were in the NBA Finals, they were taking on the Toronto Raptors. They lost Kevin Durant to an Achilles injury in Game 5, and they saw Klay Thompson tear his ACL in Game 6. They would go on to lose that game and ultimately lose the championship to the Raptors. Over these last couple years, they've been focused on recovering from those injuries while also adding pieces to the team that can help these guys go on another finals run. Here they are coming into this postseason as healthy as can be. Steph Curry, healthy. Klay Thompson, healthy. Draymond Green, healthy. And they've added some new pieces to help them along the way in the names of Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins. With these guys, they would go on to dominate and cruise their way to the NBA Finals. Steph Curry, he's back in the Finals, and this time he has a really good chance to finally capture his first Finals MVP. However, he will have some tough competition to face off against, and it will not be an easy matchup here in the Finals. Coming out of the Eastern Conference, we have a battle-tested Boston Celtics team. A team that has been on a revenge tour for the mistakes they've made over the last couple years. This team has been looking to break through for the last five years, and finally they were able to break through thanks to the emergence of their player in Jason Tatum and his partner in crime in Jalen Brown. These two have been the co-pilots in helping this Celtics team get to the finals. They've gotten help from Al Horford. They've gotten help from Marcus Smart. They've got some nice pieces in Derek White and Grant Williams. These guys have helped them get to where they are. They've dealt with a lot of battles in that Eastern Conference, and they are more than enough prepared to take on this tough Golden State Warriors team. Finally, Jason Tatum is in the finals. He's a young emerging superstar, and he has a chance to do something special and win a championship for Boston, but it's not gonna be easy because that veteran team, that dynasty he's dealing with, Golden State is looking to get themselves back into the winning column in the finals, and it's going to be one hell of a matchup. So, we've got two teams, hungry, ready, trying to win this ring. Who will win the finals? Well, I believe it comes down to matchups here. When you take a look at the matchup, I think both teams match up fairly well. However, if you look at the resumes they have when it comes to getting to the finals, Boston clearly has the advantage. When you look at Golden State, Golden State in the first round took on a Nuggets team that was just Jokic. They were missing Jamal Murray, they were missing MPJ. That Nuggets team had, they had no chance in hell at beating that Warriors team, and we all knew it. Easy five games for the Warriors. In the second round, they took on a tough, gritty Grizzlies team. Unfortunately, their best player in John Morant got injured and missed the last two games. So games five and six were basically a jawless Grizzlies team fighting back against the Warriors team that was clearly superior. So again, that was a series that could have been tougher, but Golden State won that with relatively ease. Then you get to the Western Conference Finals, and they're taking on a Dallas Mavericks team that's led by Luka and, no, just Luka. So once again, it's a similar situation to the first round. It's one superstar trying to carry himself past the Warriors, and it's just not possible. Another five-game series, and Golden State finds themselves in the NBA Finals. When you take a look at the Celtics resume, however, you see nothing but adversity. In the first round, they took on Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and that Brooklyn Nets team that was looking to make a run. That was a tough series in terms of a game-by-game -game basis, but that Celtics team went on to dominate. The games were close, but they won every single one of them and outplayed Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving down the stretch to go on and sweep the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. Then in the second round, they had to take on the defending champions that was led by Giannis. Unfortunately, Middleton did not play in that series, but you still had Giannis, who is the best player on the planet, and they were still the defending champions. This Boston Celtics team took them to seven games, and they had to face adversity because they had to go on the road in a game six, do or die elimination game, and they had to find a way to beat Giannis and this defending champion Bucks team. 
on the road in game six to force a game seven back home. And you got a master class performance from Jason Tatum to force that game seven, in which they would go on to win that game seven and advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. Then in the Eastern Conference Finals, they match up with a tough, gritty Miami Heat team who was the number one seed. Now that Heat team matches up very well against the Celtics and both teams do a lot of things it's very similar in a lot of things very well. Offensively and defensively, they are very similar in some cases in terms of what they're able to do. And that was a tough, gritty battle for the most part. And at the end of the day, once again, Boston was faced with adversity because in a game seven, they had to go on the road against the number one seeded Heat team to go into South Beach after choking at home in game six. They had to go on the road and find a way to beat this Heat team on their home court to advance to the NBA Finals. And once again, facing adversity, the Boston Celtics responded and they found a way to win and that's why they're in the NBA Finals. So one team is very battle tested, the other team is not so battle tested. However, that's not much of an advantage because the Warriors have championship experience and the Boston Celtics don't. So I think those cancel each other out. When it comes to the matchups, honestly, this series, is going to be a tough one. I don't think it's going to be a quick, easy series for the Warriors. I don't think this is done in five. A lot of people expect the Warriors to win with ease. I don't think that's going to be the case. Boston is a battle tested team. They are hungry. They are a tough team to deal with. They were the best defensive team in the regular season. They were the best defensive team in the postseason and went up against the second best defensive team and found a way to win. So they are going to be looking to frustrate that Golden State Warriors offense. And it's not going to be easy. The main matchup here is going to be the Celtics defense versus the Warriors offense. Because the Warriors, man, these pieces they brought in, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, they are a force. Offensively, Andrew Wiggins is playing the best basketball of his career. He's hitting threes at a higher percentage. He's making more efficient shots. He's been more aggressive. He's found his offensive game in this postseason, and he's done such a great job for them offensively and defensively. And then Jordan Poole, he's another splash brother. So that's three guys you have to deal with. Now you gotta deal with Steph, you gotta deal with Clay, and you gotta deal with Jordan Poole. They're gonna be running around screens and it's going to be a headache for the Celtics to deal with. However, they dealt with similarity, um, with a similar situation. Excuse me, you dealt with a similar situation with the Miami Heat. Obviously the Heat is not doing it to the extent of the Warriors, but it's not like they haven't seen something like this before. So it is possible for the Celtics to match up against this and do a fairly good job. However, it's gonna be a tough, it's gonna be a completely difficult process. It's going to be an absolute tall task and it's it's gonna be a <laughs> it's gonna be great to see it go down, but I don't know if that Celtics defense is prepared for what they're about to face. I don't know if they're prepared enough because you can never be prepared for Steph and Clay. And now that Jordan Poole's there, it's even tougher. But that's going to be the main matchup. If Boston's defense can find a way to slow down the Warriors' offense, Boston has a really good chance to win this series. However, if Golden State goes off and continues to shoot efficiently and um, Curry's getting whatever he wants, Clay gets whatever he wants, and Poole is hitting shots consistently, as well as Andrew Wiggins, who continues to drive and be aggressive and penetrate and get to the basket whenever he wants, if you're getting that... Boston will be in some serious trouble and this series can go down very quick. On the flip side, offensively for Boston versus defensively for the Warriors. The Warriors defense has been really good in the postseason and that's all thanks to Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins who have been the two pioneers of their defense. Andrew Wiggins has been playing fantastic defense and he's done a great job in guarding the best player. He was frustrating Luka in the conference finals. So be on the lookout. Andrew Wiggins will probably be the primary defender on Jason Tatum, and that will be one hell of a matchup to see. Wiggins is ready to accept the challenge, and he has been a dominating force on defense. Draymond Green's always been great on defense. He continues to be that. You also have Klay Thompson, who isn't as great defensively as he was before the injury, but he's still a really good defensive player. So let's not forget that. That is another guy you're gonna bring in. Looney is also a really good defensive player and he's gonna be your rim protector when he's in the game. And of course, Steph Curry. Curry has actually been a good defender throughout this postseason. I think there's some sort of misconception that Curry's a terrible defender. He's not great 
but he's been a solid defender throughout his career in the playoffs. If you take a look at the numbers, he's done well against some of the matchups he's had. Hell, against Russell Westbrook, he's been very, very, very efficient in defending Russell Westbrook. So it's not like it's a situation where Steph has been terrible defensively, but this year, the way he's played defense in this postseason has been better than previous years. And yes, offensively, Curry hasn't been the best compared to those previous finals run, but he still has a chance to be great in this finals and win a championship here and win a finals MVP. So Curry is probably going to be targeted at times, but he's got to be ready to answer the call. And so far throughout the postseason, he's had moments where he's answered the call. So we'll see if he can continue that. But yeah, Golden State has a good defense. And Boston, you've got Jason Tatum who can go off. You've got Jalen Brown who can go off. You've got, guys, Derek White coming off the bench. He can provide you something. Grant Williams can provide you something. Al Horford at times can provide you with something. Marcus Smart can provide you with something. So you just never know what you're going to get from the Celtics, from those other guys. But you know Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to be the pioneers offensively for you, scoring-wise. So I think... In terms of matchups between the Celtics offense and the Warriors defense, I think the Celtics offense in some cases will get that advantage and I think they would be able to do well against the Warriors defense and be able to pick their spots and find their way to um, take on that Warriors defense. I think they'll do fairly well against the Warriors defense. They will be able to score. They'll find their spots. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown will be able to drive against these guys and it's going to be one hell of a series to see. I honestly can't wait. But yeah, it's going to come down to Boston's defense versus Golden State's offense. If that Celtics defense can slow down Steph, if it can slow down Clay, if it can slow down Jordan Poole, they've got a chance. Because you got three guys that are going to be running around through screen. They're going to be running through screens, getting open. You know, all three of these guys can play both on and off ball. Clay's not the strongest on ball. But we know he, obviously, we know what he can do off ball. But on ball, he can still be somewhat effective. Steph, on ball, off ball, he's just as dangerous. And Jordan Poole, off and on the ball, has been relatively effective for them. So you got three guys now you got to deal with in that situation. If these guys are not prepared to deal with those three, as well as Andrew Wiggins and his emerging offensive game, the way he's been aggressive, the way he's been driving, that can be a problem. Not to mention, you can't really leave him open for three because in the postseason, he's been hitting those threes. And then Draymond at times will hit a three. Though, if you have to keep leave somebody open, Draymond's the answer. But man, it's going to be very interesting to see how Boston Celtics defense finds a way to try to slow down those guys. Because there are times when you'll see all three of them on the court and there's just nothing you can do. So I'm very interested to see how Boston's defense responds. Again, they've been the best defensive team in the regular season. They were the best defensive team in the postseason. Just got through beating the second best defensive team in the postseason. And yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a hell of a matchup. If Boston's defense can slow down these guys, if they can slow down Steph, slow down Clay, slow down Jordan Poole, and force it to be a situation where you really have to have both Wiggins and especially Draymond Green win you the game, Boston's got this. But if Golden State, their main guys, if their main shooters are able to get whatever they want and they're able to produce and Steph's able to go off and still be effective, uh, Boston's going to be in trouble. Again, Boston, I still believe they'll be effective against Golden State's defense, but we'll have to wait and see. Final predictions. Um, I am going to take the Golden State Warriors. I think Boston has a really, really good shot at winning this. It really comes down to their defense and they have to tighten up, especially against these guys. But I just feel like the championship experience from Golden State, they've been here before. And the fact that it's so difficult to stop these guys, just watching how they played throughout this postseason, I'm not 100% sure anybody can beat them when it comes to matchups. And they obviously have the experience. These three guys have won multiple championships. This is a dynasty after all. So they have the championship experience. They know what to do in key situations. They show up in those key situations and they find a way to get it done. Meanwhile, for Boston, the one thing that's holding me back, as a Miami Heat fan, we took him to the brink. I saw the weaknesses of this team. There are several occasions throughout this postseason where Boston's offense goes cold for absolutely no reason. Either, either it's a situation where Jason Taylor's just missing. He's not driving anymore. He's not being aggressive. He's just pulling up for jump shots, contested threes for no reason. It's either he's doing that or he's not shooting the ball at all. There'll be plenty of times where Jalen Brown is just not doing anything well offensively. There are times, or he will just disappear and not even touch the basketball. There are times when Marcus Smart, instead of driving and penetrating the defense to try and set someone else up, he'll be standing in the corner and pulling up for threes for absolutely no 
reason. Al Horford doesn't really do much offensively for them. And there are times where he really just can't hit the open three, no matter how many times they give him it. And you just don't know what you're going to get. There were plenty of moments where that happened. Hell, we saw that happen last night. This team was up 13 with like two minutes left to go. And Miami won an 11-0 run and almost won the game. If Jimmy Butler hits that three, Miami's in the finals right now. Literally, that's how crazy it was. That Celtics offense went dead cold for no reason. They had the game in hand, they went dead cold, and Miami won on the run and almost won the game. You can't do that. Two minutes of going cold. If you do that against the Warriors, you're not going to win. And that's what concerns me because they've been doing this several times throughout the postseason. And that is a serious concern. You do that against Golden State, that's the end of your team. So I, I just don't know. I don't know if that's going to pop up in the finals. It's been popping up in the other series. So I, I, I'm not sure. I just don't fully trust the Celtics to not have moments where they just don't do anything well offensively and they go cold for two to three minutes. That's a serious issue, especially against a Warriors team that only need two minutes to end the game. So yeah, I'm gonna take the Golden State Warriors in six. I got Warriors in six. However, the Celtics have been able to respond in every single possible situation when it comes to adversity. If they're down three to two, in their building for a game six, I think the Celtics will respond and force a game seven. And if that's the case, then it's still gonna be Warriors in seven. Either way, I've got the Warriors winning this championship. I'll be rooting for Boston because I want an Eastern Conference team to win. Obviously, I'm on the East Coast, so I'll be rooting for them. Not to mention, I would love to see Jason Tatum get his first ring. It'd be nice. You know, he's a young player. He finally got to the finals, finally broke through. It would be nice to see the young guns actually win a championship. But that team in Golden State, man, this, this Warrior squad, this dynasty with the championship experience, with the way Steph's still playing, with the way Clay's still looking, with the guys they have here with Draymond and everything, I'm not exactly sure they'll be able to overcome that. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, with that being said, that is all I've got, and I'm out of here, man. Peace.